Hey everyone, in the first Kingdom Hearts game and the subsequent Final Mix version, treasures weren't always as simple to open as walking up to the box and smacking it with your oversized key. Somewhere like that of course, but there are some that you had to either solve a puzzle or interact with the environment to uncover or unlock it. Today I want to take a look at 10 of these that I like particularly, and let's just note that not all are completely hidden. Some are visible but without a clear way to get to them and you have to figure it out and some aren't even treasures in the traditional sense of being a chest to open. And then some consist of actually multiple treasures obtained through a single means, a single way of getting and you get more than one treasure for it. I want to be clear this isn't exactly a guide as such, it's more of a showcase of stuff that I find cool. Uh, if you want a KH1 treasure guide check out regular Pat's complete treasure chest and item guide. I only just discovered this myself when I needed to check something while scripting this video up. but. The guide is a really great video, so I'll put the link in the description. With that said though, let's take a look at these interesting treasures. I may as well start with a treasure that I've mentioned before on this channel. This one is a mithril that you get from a chest that only appears after you strike the clock in the green room until it reads 7 o'clock. Uh, ignore the blue chest, that's one that's unlocked because Leon and Yuffie tell you how to use the keyblade to unlock things. The red chest on the other hand is completely absent until you complete the task. There's a couple of fun clues about this one. First off, the obvious one that the hotel receptionist advises you to hit the clock. And secondly, that the art exhibit paintings in the green room show you how many times you need to hit it. There's Midday Jungle, Bold Mountain, 7am and 6 o'clock in the past. And it's at these times that the little progress sound effect plays. With that nostalgic puzzle complete sound at the end. I like the connectivity this one treasure has with the rest of the green room and even the whole hotel and how even the clues about it, you have to examine the paintings in the hallway too and then the hotel guy tells you and then you examine the paintings in the room and you get an idea of how much you have to hit it. Of course you could just smack away at it but it's still nice that it's there. It feels like it's a really important secret of the hotel and I quite like that importance that's given to it. Freezing the bubbles in Hollow Bastion to make platforms is one of the quintessential KH1 secrets by now it's a classic, the more you know statement that people make. One cool effect of this, and this is one that's pretty fairly known by now I think, is being able to reach a chest in the waterways. One of the biggest teasers in the game is if you manage to catch a glimpse of this chest, but you don't actually know how to reach the thing. The jump up to it isn't completely straightforward either, though I made it harder than I needed to in this footage, um, but I love this chest. It combines a few of my favourite parts of Cage 1, using magic on the environment, platforming and then having a secret area tucked away in the world. And inside the chest is a rare material dark matter, which is certainly what an out of the way treasure like this deserves to have. This is one of the many treasures you can get along this path of Wonderland. You gotta light the torch on the side wall of the bazaar room that lets you sink down into a special room in the lotus forest. And I like this room a lot to be honest, it's so secluded and secret. Places like this in games always appeal to me. And adding the fact that it's inside the Lotus Frost room, but not accessible normally, and you've got a damn cool treasure. You can even see this room from the larger section of the Lotus Forest, making you wonder how to get in there. This is one of those that is technically multiple treasures, but the one I want to highlight is the Lady Luck keychain you get from the White Trinity. The plus two magic is a nice stat, especially if you don't have Diamond Dust or Ultima yet. And this is also a case of the game actually directing you a little bit towards a hidden treasure, since Trinity Marks are logged in the journal. I think it's only natural that a player of this game would try and blow out the candles in the Colosseum entrance with Blizzard, especially since we already did it with the candles in Traverse Town. But since regular Blizzard doesn't actually work on them, you might completely forget about this, which is exactly what I did until very late into my recent playthrough. So using Blizzara on them, a stronger magic, will net you one chest, while Blizzaga reveals the other, or you can just use Blizzaga at once and get both like I did. It's another example of using magic on the environment, and the addition of needing a higher tier of that magic is a super cool touch that adds a level of depth to a simple enough treasure. I can imagine people doing this with Blazara and then not realising they can come back with Blazaga and grab another chest. Also side note, I can't be the only one who actually enjoys seeing a hidden chest appear out of nowhere after I complete a puzzle, right? I don't know, I find that kind of cool. So here's another example of a multi-part treasure. 
Opening the path up to the very top of the lift stop already requires solving the bookshelves puzzle in the library, and that would get you a chest. But you may spot another just out of reach on the other side. Oh, and shout out by the way to the gravity chest in Hollow Bastion, another super cool use of magic on the environment. So the interesting thing about this other chest is the fact that you can't do anything immediately to get it. Instead you've got to go halfway up the castle and press a switch, which itself requires doing the block puzzle. Then, when you're next in the library, you can finally ascend to the other side and grab this fancy belt. That's quite an involved treasure right there, and again, one that teases its existence to you. That so close yet so far feeling that makes solving it even more satisfying. Let's stay in Hollow Bastion now for a rather more simple, but also pretty cool chest. This time, you have to slip slipsaw under those hefty blocks I mentioned, and enter another special room in the lift stop. I like this one because it's a case of rewarding the player for a risky move. Sure, you know, you can see what looks like an entrance when the game shows those blocks moving around. But you know that if you go down there, you may end up falling down the castle again, which you do. So as a reward for your reckless efforts, they give you a pretty nice accessory, at least in the final mix version of the game. Ah, what can I say about this one? It's quite the strange treasure to obtain. First off, you can lock onto the urchin and the clam. So you know that they do something. And you are aware by this point that the clams thus far have provided you with treasures. But what you have to figure out is that you need to use fire on the spiky little thing to blow it up and force open that clam. It's not quite what I expected really, especially with how the effect doesn't happen for a few seconds, which might leave you incorrectly spamming all sorts of magic like I did. But it's a completely wacky way to obtain a treasure and I don't mind that at all, I think it's fun. And let's be honest, who doesn't like blowing stuff up? Now, here's a very simple one, but it's cool nonetheless. The cemetery room in Halloween Town, that you can only access after finishing the world. The entrance to it isn't hard to find at all, but you've got to be invested just enough to go back to the world and then realise this Christmassy looking door, which is a nice detail by the way, is interactable. And a whole room dedicated to treasure is just always cool, especially when it's tucked away but in plain sight. You can actually see this room from the adjacent boneyard area, and vice versa you can see the boneyard from here, but you can't see either of them from the moonlit hill. So I, that's, I don't know, I find it just a pretty cool room and it's got a few treasures in it which is always nice. This is really the main additional puzzle of the watery lower chambers of the Cave of Wonders. With this it requires you first open a secret doorway, then you can reach that doorway by jumping straight to it if you have high jump. Or in the above section you can use Yellow Trinity to knock a pillar down there, but that's only going to happen really if you don't have high jump or didn't realise you could use it. But you did unlock Yellow Trinity from the Hercules Cup, which only activates after Halloween Town and Neverland are locked, so it's quite an unlikely scenario for most players, but there you go, it's there. Then you touch another statue and a couple of chests are revealed. While the pillar isn't really needed, it's an example of clever and interesting world design that pushing something to the bottom area will of course mean you find it down there later, and it makes separate rooms seem like one world space even when they're not. Plus, finding treasures in the Cave of Wonders is completely filling the fantasy, and I'm going to assume that the tiger head isn't annoyed about you touching something other than the lamp like he is in the film, because you saved him from the darkness corruption, maybe? I don't know. Finally, I could not complete this list without mentioning this very inventive way of finding treasure. I remember when I played KH1 as a kid, I had no idea why some doors of the clock tower were opening and some others weren't. It wasn't until the remixes came out that I learned how it works, with the doors opening according to the in-game time. For example, 15 hours into your game, if you visit the tower, the 3 o'clock door will open, and if you miss that chance, you can try again at 27 hours. When I found this out, I was so taken aback, and honestly, it was a big part in making me interested in this sort of stuff in games, especially Cage 1. It's a unique mechanic, being something you don't directly control, and you might even want to plan for it if you're wanting to get all 12 treasures without waiting around too much. There's some pretty useful items as rewards here too. Then, you also have the clock face glowing to show which times you've completed already, providing a much appreciated reference for you to know when to revisit the clock tower. Of course, if you've already rescued Kari from Hollow Bastion, You've got to deal with the phantom first. All in all, this is a mysterious, inventive, and rewarding secret set of treasures that really showcases the best of Kingdom Hearts world design. 
Catron's treasures are the main incentive for exploring and getting to grips with its interesting and sometimes even weird and wacky world design. I love that some are in easy reach, others require a bit of platforming, and then some, like the ones I've mentioned, are behind a puzzle or in a secret area, and you've got to think about it or at least look it up. And since the journal doesn't have a chess log, like the other games, many of us found out about some of these treasures years and years later. When you don't know that you're missing something, you won't even think to search it up in the first place. Then of course, harder to reach chests tend to reward you better with rare synth items and rarer gummy blocks, if you care about those, or some pretty neat accessories. All of this combined means that exploring these areas in the game is a blast, at least for me, and I love finding out something I didn't realise about this game. It just goes to show how deep it really is. So I'm looking to do more videos about the other games in the series. I realise I've been very KH1 centric recently, so I would like to branch out a bit. With that in mind, if anyone wants to suggest an idea or just something that you'd like to see for a video, then feel free to comment it below. But otherwise, thanks for watching.